Now, the rest of the story. Welcome to my front porch. It's kind of cluttered right now. I literally just pulled the lawnmower out, if you can't tell. A winter full of sitting in the machine shed getting attacked by the birds. But it does run like a champ. I just have a couple things I gotta do to it. Oh uh, well, yearly service. Uh, between the Polaris and the Honda, they are kind of getting shuffled around all the time. Even more so now that I have this bumper hitch trailer to use. Because the problem is, because we have the three main farms, if you want to call them that, so close together, it's really common to hop in a four-wheeler and run up to one of the other farms if you're short something or if you're working by yourself. Uh, point in case, when I was planting, um, I was coming down to, brought the 46 down, I loaded it full of seed before I came down, uh, seated for a little while, and then, uh, dogs losing all their tags, um, I ended up, once I needed the seed tender, I just hopped on the Polaris and ran up and was able to pick up the truck and bring the truck back. Uh, that's a big reason why I try to keep at least one folder at each farm. Well, the Gator works really well at the main farm. But uh, that's, yeah, that's why they're sitting on my porch right now. That's getting nice out. This is probably the first, yeah, I'll say it. This is actually probably the first nice day of this year so far that I've actually been able to enjoy myself. I mean, yeah, we've had nicer days, but I've been in the field. So this is something that I got to deal, uh, deal with. Uh, it's an apple tree at one point in time it was a really nice looking apple tree there was actually two here at one point there's another one right there and this one they've been here as far back as i can remember actually probably longer than i have been on this earth uh, that one was the one that we always used to climb in there used to be one over in my yard actually there was a big uh bigger tree you actually see the stump right about there and um uh, what was that evergreen pine i don't know i'm the one that cut it down you think i remember that but um been really kind of cutting down the trees around my place i'm really not a big fan of trees especially around the, uh, the main buildings but the reason this one has actually managed to stay here this long is because my dad likes it and Unfortunately, I think it's going to be coming to an end soon. Uh, the reason my dad liked it so much is because it used to produce, it still does produce some apples. And what happened was, is that when dad would go to milk cows, he'd always grab a few apples off of this and he'd go and eat them while he was milking cows. The only problem is, is I've never eaten apples off these trees. Uh, they probably would have done better if maybe we would have treated them and sprayed for bugs and everything else for them but my big thing is is because it's right in my yard uh, when all the apples fall off and they start to rot and stink and it's a real treat to go over and mow through them uh, the cows are really liking the grass once i get done with this video i actually gotta go for a little cruise out in the four-wheeler i gotta go check pastures i think they need to be opened up in the next lot because they're going to have this mowed down pretty well to dirt if I let them. And was trying to work on my driveway. Yes, it is washed again. It's gravel. Uh, I am really good at building up my driveway where it won't wash. I spent two days on it last year. Um, I had it looking really nice. And the problem is it's really hard to build up your driveway and build up dirt and gravel in a way that's able to stand an inch in about 10 minutes. Uh, we are literally, what it seems like, we are literally getting what seems like 20 year, 50 year, 100 year floods uh, every week, every other week. Uh, last year, it was pretty much the same thing. We got into August and 
there was a stretch there August into September we were checking fences at least once a week and that gets that gets ridiculous after a while that's why I would really like to see a steer shed of some sort up through here um, ideally I'd like to go back to using the blue harvester maybe tear down the concrete one uh, the concrete one would actually need a bunch of work to get back to being able to used uh, the blue one the silo in itself is actually fine what needs the work is actually the feed bunk because you can see all the posts had rotted off and it just looks rough infrastructure needs to be done around here uh, I guess you guys are gonna want to see the inside of this barn well I'm this close you guys are probably wondering why I'm not going down low showing it but all right there's a whole lot of nothing around here anymore um, milk house you guys can tell your standard milk house uh, we went through and painted it a while back and since then I mean, it's been handful of years now it needs to be gone through and painted again which I think dad, not dad uh, Brittany's dad uh, either was gonna paint it or is planning on painting it. he's got some kind of spare Brittany wants to turn this into well doesn't really want to turn it into anything she just wants to get the water hooked back up in here because the water is currently shut off and she has a dog bed she wants to get a grooming station so we can wash the dogs mainly a big one for me is this guy I love him he's a bit of a jerk the reason I say he's a bit of a jerk is because he's really good at getting muddy and dirty and crummy um, he's a lot better than some of the other dogs when we take him out and run him on the four-wheeler he stays out of the mud for the most part but up to his knees his paws I mean like right now he does have some mud on him and it would be nice to have a place where I could bring him in and wash him especially in the winter early spring late not so much late fall because usually it's freezing by then but early spring rainy days stuff like that this is where the collection jar used to be um, all the milk controls uh, the bulk tank wasn't a huge one it actually sat right in here uh, that went to Mexico I believe uh, I don't remember when we tore that out but um, somebody actually came and you can see where the where it used to be is where the legs were but it um they got sent to Mexico because I guess the time I don't know what their current dairy industry is currently doing down there uh, but at the time they were uh, trying to expand their milk production down uh, down in Mexico so if you're wondering where all the black soot is from that's actually from a diesel heater uh, one, one way back when when I was actually milk or raising bottle calves in here I never milked in here uh, I think they quit milking in this barn back in 93 and um, I used to have bottle calves in here so during the winter I always had to have well until we capped off the water we always had to have some form of heater in here in the winter to keep it from freezing up and we were using a nipco you know one of those jet heaters and what happened was is that it flamed out and then instead of just shutting off and not trying to keep blowing air it kept blowing that black soot for however long it it was actually out and it was about six in the morning 6 30 six no it was quarter to seven by the time i i found it you coming or are you gonna stay out there you're gonna stay out there now as i've told you time and time again for those of you that have actually been watching the channel long enough uh this does not look like what it used to i'm sweating really bad if you can't I think I need to shave tonight getting kind of tired of that um, the cows got in here they knocked my gate over and cows are really stupid like that uh, when they find a, a place they can get inside like this they all crowd in the building and that's exactly what they did until I found them later that day and they pretty much destroyed it in here but if you guys want an example hey buddy of what my calf stalls look like um, this barn was 
full of these very simple calf stalls. I mean, looking back, I wouldn't have done it this way, but when I was 17, this is how I had it set up with the different calf stalls, and it worked really well for the first couple groups I ran through here. When it started to burn me was when I had ran a few calves through here. Um, the bugs, disease, whatever uh, had made its way in here. Um, I knew somebody at the time they were taking a science class at the local college and they asked me it's like well do you know any place where I could take a a swab just take a a cotton swab and just rub it around and see see what I can find you know because they're gonna grow it in like a culture or whatever and it's just like well go rub it on one of these um, calf stalls I have set up down here so he did and he came back and he says yeah it looked like a rainbow and he said that uh, one of the traces they found was something, some kind of fungus that's used to create penicillin. So, I don't know. Um, a lot of the thing, a lot of what was really hurting me in this barn, which you guys can get a nice little pan view. This is what the barn looked like. Um, barn cleaner, I had that running. Everything else like that, it ran out right over there. I had a really nice setup in here. But what the problem is, is that I did not have enough airflow. Even with all the windows open, the door is open and the fans running it it just wasn't enough so i actually had that full of calf stalls i had the exact exact same identical setup right through here i had the exact same setup back to back right here and then on this far platform i went through and actually just sectioned that off into one big pen and then i was using a milk bar setup. It's just a milk bar with four, uh, ten nipples on it, where you just you can feed a group of calves. Worked really well, as long as the calves are started in there right away. Let me rephrase that. As long as the calves are already pre-started, so you weren't bringing brand new calves in and putting them in over there, uh, because they need to go through that stress time period. And. Um, after two weeks of being in the stalls, you can move them over and then move in a new calf into the stalls. I had, I think I could raise about 40 in here. And when you're young and your options in life as far as different things you can do to, you know, try to get involved in agriculture and stay involved and actually be involved in ag and try to make some, some money. Uh, bottle calves was, was a way to for me to really get my feet wet and be involved in agriculture and like i said the first couple groups went through here just fine but once i started running through more groups i was fine through the winter but once i got into the summer i think it was june the next year uh, things just started to fall apart in this barn that's the barn up at rockville set up for bottle calves we can actually raise 80 78 in there something like that um, we can raise fairly healthy sized group in there and the airflow is so much better than this barn ever thought of being so like i've said time and time again this barn's future really is to be torn down it's it's not useful for anything as far as putting calves in here again that'll never happen i mean the barn cleaner is gone which was kind of a nightmare for all the turns it has on it but you say it's Time changes, things change, and that's why there's a whole bunch of old barns all across the country. It's just because they become obsolete. I can't use this barn for anything. I can't use the outside lot for anything. Um, I had it nice in here. I almost, I really wish I almost was taking video or I took pictures. And the thing that really kind of gets under my skin is that I had some pictures in here when I was doing this. Uh, it was on my old hard drive and it crashed and those pictures are, are gone for good. Uh, because my brother, uh, that's where the whole family thing really kicks in. I was doing this when I was in college. So I was actually going to NICC. It was an hour and a half away. I was living up there during the week. My brother, bless his heart, he was actually getting up before school because he was in high school. And he was coming over and he was feeding calves for me morning and night during the week. And then when I would come home, I would do them all weekend, I never expected anything out of them. I would clean the stalls out. I would rebed them back down because 
Ryan was strung pretty thin um, when he was in high school. I mean, he was only, what, a sophomore? Sophomore or junior? Sophomore. Sophomore going into his junior year, he was doing that. Uh, and that meant a lot to me because I couldn't afford to really pay him. Um, that's where the whole family thing really kicks in pretty, pretty heavy. So, I don't know. Um, I can't really explain the whole... It's irritating um, because I can't really explain the whole family thing to some people because I just, if they don't have an experience that dynamic growing up, um, but that's why my family we help each other like we do because family is family. That's that that's just how it is. And if I need to drop everything I'm doing to go help Ryan, vice versa. If we both got to drop what we're doing and go help our our parents. It's just what you do. We do the same thing for my sister, and she isn't actively part of the farming operation, but more than once we have literally dropped what we were doing and went and helped. It's just what you do. So there really shouldn't be any questions to it. So um, I'm not, this door I don't even think is on the roller anymore, but I had a nice calf lot out here. Uh, lean to down on the other side of this it was actually set up for... Um, it had 10 stanchions in it. It might have been 12 stanchions in it. So when Dad was milking here, um, he didn't have any milking, uh, any sort of milking set up down there. But what he did do was he would switch them out. Um, he would switch out a bunch of cows out of here, either let them out that way, and let them up to the silo to go eat silage. And then he would move in those 10, bring them in, milk them. I so say there's a lot of work that goes into dairy, um, unless you're set up properly to do it. And this barn. Uh, milking was an afterthought in this barn so you guys can see the hay mow this is the barn up through here um, I still think there's some straw up there it's I don't think it's saying good anymore um, but that right up here right above us is the origin story of uh, my grandma is tougher than you um, stories because my grandma literally is <laughs> um, that's the hay mow she was working in. Uh, we were filling up with straw. And she, uh, ah, heck, leave it open, let it air out. Um, and she was a hell of a worker. So, hey buddy. Uh, this, this farm as a whole um, is a far cry away from what it was when I was growing up. It was in a lot better condition but it was being actively used and when you're actively using stuff things get old things wear and the problem is i could go through and fix it back up to look exactly how it was when i was growing up that's not what we need i mean what it was is not what we need if that makes any sense um, i need to go through i need some dozer work done to it um, the concrete on the far side here where that guardrail is has collapsed because the dirt had washed out under it um, ideally, I'd like to build it back up and um, either refence it off and then use it as kind of like a, a sorting area. I don't know. I got a thousand and one different ideas I'd like to do. I mean, because I would actually like to take that bunk. If I actually could put in the steer shed I would like to put in, what I would actually like to do is take that feed bunk and rip it out and then put a new bunk in. Kind of like how my friend Ryan has one. Um, it's actually kind of down a longer bunk um, that kind of goes at an angle uh, that way um, and use that for feeding on a daily basis. The reason I want to keep using the silos uh, to a certain degree is because it's a lot easier for my wife, Brittany, uh, when she gets home from work or if I'm in the field and she's trying to ease my workload that I have going on it's a lot easier for her to throw some switches and to make sure everybody is alive and breathing rather than expect her to fire up skid steer fire up tractor and go and try to fill up a feed wagon or something like that I'm sure she could do it um, but if if she's juggling kids around I mean, you gotta keep that in mind too. I mean, she's, you only do so much when she's working and then help, trying to help me. And then if you throw kids into it, that's just a whole different variable that I haven't really taken in, into consideration yet. So, 
wow, I didn't plan on covering that much. So you guys are watching the rest of the story. I hope you appreciate it. I know I didn't cover it as nearly as thoroughly as I could have, but I think that was a, a fair enough barn tour. I think so. Do you have any questions? Make sure you comment down below. I'll try to reply in the comments or I'll just bite the bullet and make another video answering your questions. So until next time, tomorrow night, take care, take it easy, keep in touch. I'll talk to you then.